Okay, welcome to episode number 12 of the Let's Discuss Gaming podcast. I am your host, Triple J. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, Dr. Games 101. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Hello, people. You don't know it. Anyway. <laughs> um, so we got uh, we got a few things to talk about, um, but Dr. Games 101 wanted to talk about the Trump situation and everything that happened with the Capitol last week. Yeah, so... so uh, Dr. Dr. Games 101, I'm gonna let you start. Oh, uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, James. Uh, Triple J. Uh, yeah. So I'm not. I don't know all the details because obviously every source has different perspectives on the situation. Uh, basically, there was a situation where the, the elections were having some problems accumulating the, the proper votes in every state, especially in Pennsylvania, Georgia, and I believe Minnesota or Michigan. Michigan one one of the especially, definitely. Especially uh, Georgia and um, and Pennsylvania, but then all of a sudden, you know, there's been an over accumulation of votes of, on Biden's side to, to vote for him, and one leads to another. We got the uh, this uh, rollout or this uh, this rec- I don't know if you could call it a recall, or whatever. But basically, Mike Pence was the one was on charge to making sure that Trump and Biden will one will become official president elect basically become president for for the next four years and Pence just betrayed Trump and everyone's pissed off about the matter and one thing leads to another we see that the Capitol you know was planned ahead mo- weeks ago if not months ago almost and uh, you know and this is what happens when you know your freedom of speech is at risk now because now after during that escapade by by own by any means necessary I don't know how but uh, pretty much Trump was ousted from Twitter, Facebook, and other uh, social media sites. Any, any, all, any of all websites you can think of that will mention to the public. The only thing that's left is OnlyFans for Trump. That's about it. So you know, and it's ridiculous that as a president of the United States, he cannot have a voice on social media anymore. And that's very scary to us regular everyday Americans. Because if Trump can do it, if Trump can be ousted from from office. Uh, and, and as well as be ousted from social media just because of his speech only, then I don't know all wants to say about about this country at all. And uh, it's, it it will get skin scarier and scarier as time goes along after that matter, especially. So that's what I, that's my short intake on on the matter. And I think, and I think that you, we should look into the matter as us Americans. Did you hear? Uh, I don't, I don't think it was Tim Pool. Uh, it was I think the liberal hive mind on YouTube. Uh, Project Veritas released a video with Jack Dorsey saying uh, President Trump is only the beginning. Oh, yes. He always was and the beginning <laughs> because they always bash him. Every single week, day, hour of the day, it's, they always bash Trump for every day for four or five years now. We always hear Trump news this, Trump news that. And it's like they don't, they're, they're lazy, these journalists. They're spoiled little brats. Don't know what to expect in the world, and I think that reality is just nothing but Trump, and, and just like let's bash Trump all the time. I don't like the guy either. After a while, but then again, you know, I respect the guy because he's been around our whole lives, James. Well, he's been yeah. in Home Alone two and the, the Apprentice. He also was donating to various charities and organizations, made his own brands. So he's had a, a grandpa that, that we never get to visit yet, you know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far, but that would be... I mean, hey, I, I think it would be awesome if I was related to Trump in some way, but... Because think about it, he's sitting in his 70s, you know, we're in our 30s, and, you know, since, uh, since we were kids, he was in his 40s and 50s uh, making deals like crazy in Manhattan. He made deals with the mob bosses, you know, because he, he, he was involved in almost every aspect of America, if not New York, at least. And that's what yeah, I like about him. New York. What's that? He revived New York because New York was awful, like in the '70s and '80s, and he's the one who uh, brought it back to life. Yeah, there was a lot of crime back in the '90s as well, but it started to get better since the 2000s, especially thanks to him as part of the matter. Right. But after all that, all that time he did, and and the the way he 
portrayed himself to the public for after all these decades. Now people hate him so much because he's the president of the United States and he's the boogeyman of, of the of the radical right or whatever the the, the left is thinking of him for. And it's getting ridiculous. Like why I don't see people what's the purpose of all of this bashing on, on Trump? I mean, oh sure, I bash Obama but during his time in office, but I have a life. Obama deserved it. Yeah, and, and I had and I had a life as well. Even though I lost most of my, uh, you know, my my reputation on National Obama to, to my people in my neighborhood, because they think that I was crazy for talking about the negative about Obama, but that's that's another issue of its own. It's just a separate issue. So, but yeah, get back on Trump. You know, you know it sucks that you know he, he he's he's gone. You know, now now you can't hear from him what he wants to say directly to the public. He's like the first ever president to use Twitter in, in a very public sized type of fashion as a politician. Right. Do you, um, I want to ask you, what were your thoughts of what happened on the Capitol on the 6th? I think it was, I won't say it's justified. I think it, it, it happened as accumulation of, a, of anger and frustration among the fan base or the, the Trumpers or the, the Trump supporters all together as a whole. So they basically came together, went to the Capitol, because Trump in, in, in instigated them or encouraged them to go to the Capitol and just march peacefully. But then they got agitators from Antifa, Black Lives Matter there, in, in their own colors, you know, with their own, like, you know, MAGA, Make America Great Again hats and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, you want them to be peaceful, but it's justified in the end for it to be violent in the end, even though people get killed, the an officer got killed, a special woman got killed, and it was like you know, it happens. For it happens. That's what that's what happens in violent conflicts. You know, if that people die, and it's out of anger and frustration from the government that we, but bestowed upon us as people. Now I know I sound very political, and this is a, a gaming podcast, but. Think about this. Do you really want a president of the United States to be ousted from all social media sites if that could happen to you on a regular level as U.S. citizens, guys? I mean, this is uh, this is very scary, you know. Because any any speech you're thinking of, like if you're right, if you're moderate to right, you're going to be a threat. And I'm more like a dead center moderate into the occasional left most of the time because like, they go back to that welfare, go back to the tax basis, stuff like that, but but in the end, it's like it's a back and forth, because the more you go towards the right, the more likely you be censored easily by the left. So. Right, okay. So, um, I, I, have, I have to say, I feel the same about the um, attack at the Capitol. It was, it was frustration, because people felt their voices weren't getting hurt. Um, you, you, you see these lawsuits thrown out. Oh, you filed too early. You filed too late. You're the wrong party to file. Mm -hmm. That th these are the reasons the lawsuits were thrown out. Yeah. And that's what made people so angry that it's like, hey, we got proof, but you're not even giving us a chance to present that proof. You know, why don't you hear what we have to say and then decide if our case is valid or not? Mm -hmm. But that's not what happened. So people were angry on the sixth. But I have to say, um, what I thought was going to happen, I thought like thousands of people were going to show up, Trump was going to deliver a speech, and basically people were just going to um, protest and chant, and it was going to be peaceful. You know, maybe the count and the voting would have been affected because you would have had thousands of people chanting so loud that they could be heard from inside the Capitol building. Definitely. I thought that's the way. I thought that's the way the um, counting of the votes was going to be affected, that the people outside, there were so many and they were so loud that uh, that you could hear you could hear them in the Capitol building, in the voting room, as clear as day, and you couldn't tune them out because they weren't doing anything wrong. Right. That's the way I thought the thing at the Capitol building was going to go. I didn't know people were going to be allowed to enter and stuff. And uh, no de no disqualifications .com actually wrote an article about a bunch of wrestlers that spoke out of that, that spoke out against uh, what happened on the Capitol. Mm. Now, now a couple of wrestlers, um, I'm gonna cover them first, and then I'll get to one that I 
disagreed with the most. Uh, Lance Storm and Mickey James, they talked about it. They uh, they denounced what happened at the Capitol. Ah oh, man. But, but the reason, but the reason I still have the respect I have for Lance Storm and Mickey James is when Antifa was burning down buildings and uh, rioting and looting, Lance Storm and Mickey James called that out on Twitter when it happened. Right. So at least they're staying consistent. You don't support it. You don't support rioting from one side. You don't support rioting from the other side, regardless of the reason. I can respect that. Mm-hmm. Would you like to know what... Um, uh, this guy, I'm going to be referring to him from now on as Jacked Up Nimrod. Because <laughs> he, he doesn't deserve any respect. Would you know? Would you like to know what Jacked Up Nimrod said uh, during the summer um, in response to Antifa? Why? Okay, let me open up this. I have the snapshot saved, so let me open up the snapshot. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll check, out Twitter, check out your Twitch right now. Oh, you! Oh, you want me to show it on Twitch? It's up to you. Okay, I I can do that. Uh, let's see, image. Okay, snapshot one. Now this is uh, Dave Batista's own Twitter. He goes. Um, actually, I'm gonna. Uh, Dave Batista goes. But keep in mind, this is summer 2020. Antifa is the reaction to an equal said an equal and opposite action. The GOP and Donald Trump love to condemn and label the reaction, but I don't hear them condemn and label the white supremacist action. It's pathetic brainwashing propaganda to divide by fear. It's transparent AF. Mm. I don't know what white supremacist uh, actions jacked up Nimrod is talking about. <laughs> well so now, now let's see what no 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 that, that that was during the summer. Now let's see what Batista had to say or J- jacked up Nimrod had to say um after the uh events of the riot uh at the Capitol. Um so okay. Uh he goes, that's not a protest, it's an attack. Hashtag traitor support traitor Trump. That's what Jacked Up Nimrod had to say. Okay. I, was, I responded to him, and I said, you said Antifa and Battle Movement were justified for what they did, like burning businesses and attacking people, but you have a problem when the other side responds the way they did. That is a double standard. Hmm. What do you think? Do you think he, uh, that was hypocritical? Of it is. It's, it's, I can't, I can't, it's the, the evidence has shown that he's He's being a hypocrite, and uh, you know, I mean, Batista. I don't know much about him because of politics. I see him as a wrestler. He's a good wrestler in the ring. You know, he retired not too long ago, so that's good on his part. He became part of the Gears, the Gears Five, Gears of War Five game, game uh, skin stuff like that. So let's leave it at that with him, and that's it. But when you get into politics, if he ever runs for president or runs for any political office. He has to make sure to be balanced with the people. He can't just be like, you know, too lopsided with anyone, everyone. So. And he was completely lopsided. Antifa and bow movement are a reaction because of injustices. But when people in uh, riot because of injustices that happen to Trump, oh, they're, they're traitors. Hmm. Well, I have to say this, um, you know, we, we we come to a crossroads where, as Americans, whether we're mice or men, because we're gonna let these big tech giants tell us what when to say certain things, when not to say certain things, or or even to to even say it or not, and uh, it's 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 ridiculous that that they ousted Trump because I don't like him as like a love I don't love the guy, but you know I respect him his speech. He's a president of the United States. He should be treated with some kind of respect, and I don't. And I should respect Obama too, and you know, respect Bush and stuff like that. I bashed him how many times in college and in in my workplace by mistake, and that type of stuff. That's that's public knowledge right now. But you know, that's 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 basically you know just it, it's just not right. You know, let the guy speak, 
And if Batista, right. person himself, at going back to him, wants to be, you know, a, a, a flip flopper, you know, by all means, yeah. you know, yeah. that's up to him. And the thing is, if you're gonna um, be a flip flopper, you can be have that opinion, but be ready to defend that opinion. Yes. Uh, uh, the fact that I, now I know, yes, Batista's never heard of me. He'll probably never hear of the stream. Even if we upload this clip as the free clip, one of the free clips from this episode, will cut or um, no one that even knows Batista personally will probably ever hear this hear this clip. Yeah, so, I'll, we might get like maybe a hundred people to hear the first minute of the clip, and that's it. They move move on most likely. But, but the thing is, you know, I mean, at least when I defend Trump, at least I can uh, provide sources. I can provide. Um, I can provide basically when I have an opinion. I can provide sources that back up my claim and why I feel the way I do. Definitely. You know, it's just like when uh, when I was talking to someone from Bow Movement. I'm like, okay, so you believe that every black man should have free college? You believe every black man should be paid a livable wage regardless of job? Please defend those decisions. And he couldn't do it, and he got upset because he couldn't defend those. And how are you gonna pay for it in the long run? Because, because I, I know about it, if you want to be specific with me, I'm a black person with college debt. debt. I paid off my debt from Solvay County back as early as 2013, but I re-entered college back in 2016 with DeVry, and then later on with uh, Independence University now as my current college I'm attending. And I have at least what twenty thousand in debt right now because of what I did with Independence. So it's like. You're telling me that you're going to give me free college and give me the less education. And it's dumbed down to some extent, this yeah. education. So you're, you're telling me that you're going to give me free education, but you're going to dumb down the course to make sure that I pass with ease, so with 90% or 100%, and that's it. And you're going to give me the crappiest jobs, you're going to give me the crappiest everything. I'd rather attend a, a decent university that's to my standards to make it in the world. I, I don't want no special treatment. You know, if I suck in college, I suck in college. And I work at McDonald's for the rest of my life or Subway Sandwiches. I used to work for Subway Sandwiches. I was accepting the fact that I might work for Subway or for some fast food low, low minimum wage job for the rest of my life at one point. But, you know, people just don't understand where I come from about the man. Like, oh, Charles, you go going to strive for better. Like, no, bitch. No, not say bitch, but no, God damn it. Come on now, guys. And I'm not everyone can be the DB the president of the United States. Not everyone can be an engineer for uh, Bowen, like uh, uh, the Bill Nye science guy is. You gotta be smart. So you gotta have like the smarts in the business. Not street smarts, but the smarts in the business, so. Well, Bill Nye, the science guy, is a hack, but. Um, well, he's an engineer. He's not, he's not, he's not too stupid. <laughs> uh, I, I just, it's just, uh, I, t I told you the story before, but I'll tell it again. Yeah. Uh, in seventh grade, uh, we did, uh, Bill Nye, the guy, science guy, did an experiment on his TV show. Yes. And Bill Nye came up with one result. The, the textbook that, um, that also did the same experiment had a completely different result. It was like they had the two opposites. So uh, my science teacher wanted to do the experiment ourselves to see would we get Bill Nye's result or would we get the results from the textbook? And it turns out we got the same result as the textbook. Mm. So it's kind of like, well, we just did Bill Nye's experiment and we didn't get his result. We got the, uh, we got the opposition's result. At least Bill Nye uh, did say back twenty years ago that there's two there's two uh, sexes in the in the world, male and female. So, well, he's right about that. <laughs> I mean, I, I congratulate the guy for at least saying the truth back twenty years ago. Everything back then was different. It was like, dude, the, the social media is so different back then because we were new to it. You know, we were still interacting in person. Somehow, some way, because now everything's online. But 20 years ago, you still had to go to the college in person and email your teacher, then meet the teacher in person, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's like, you know, all this progress started to make things a little worse for us Americans after a while. In a okay. sense. Yeah. So I mean, you know, again, I, I really don't have anything wrong with Bill Nye. It's just, it's just funny that one time, 
Uh, we tried one of his experiments and got the completely different result that mm -hmm. he got. So, but uh, honestly, I really don't have a, too much of a problem with him. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, you know, like I, but like I said, we were talking about before. You got a, you got a viewpoint. It could be anything you want, but at least have, at least back it up with facts. Back it up with, back it up with information. Yep. Definitely. And that's one reason. And that's one reason a lot of people hate me, because I'll call out their BS. I'll say it's BS. I'll show them why it's BS, and they can't refute it. Hmm. Just make sure. Here's a situation that people don't don't understand in the long run, and I experienced this. And I think you guys should listen in on this better too. If you're younger than me, and if you're around, and if you're around our age, but younger, uh, don't. If you're willing to sacrifice something, make sure, you know, you uh, sacrifice that something for something else in the process. So it's like you have to play with the numbers or play with the uh, the, the the belief system because it, because if you put yourself out there. You might get stunned in the long term, long run for any job opportunities or for any like friendship issues or friendship problems or friendship altogether. So I was like, so you and I, James, we're we're pretty much on, on this in sync with each other with our with mm -hmm. our uh, wavelengths, if you call it call like that. So we're good between you and I. But the outside world is cruel. Like you know, they they they'll they'll, they'll tear you down. They'll they'll take your bank accounts. They'll take your um, money away from your from your uh, for your uh, for your name. That's what people have been doing for the last. Well, ba Citibank took took this couple's earnings. It, it took it out of their accounts and shut down their accounts because they were like anti Obama or some shit like that with the bake the cake issue with the, the let the oh wow with the the cakes or something. I don't know the whole details because I it's been so many years I, have, I haven't heard of it. it. But it was something similar to where it's like, oh, they were anti-Obama or pro-Trump at the time during the 2016 elections, and they all they took their accounts away from them, Citibank or J.P. Morgan Chase. It was ridiculous. Okay, well, I don't have a Citibank or J.P. Morgan Chase near me, but I do. I'm never doing. <laughs> I, I'm never. I'm never doing business with them. That's for sure. I do, and I, that was that's, that's the worst mistake to, to join them. But I had no choice in that because the bank, the, the regional bank I was with. Change their policies on overdraft fees. So after a while, I keep getting overdraft fees over and over. They didn't like that fact, they know, and they know I was struggling financially trying to pay off bills. They didn't, they didn't care. Right. They, just, they just cut me off within a matter of sec seconds after the that seconds literally, but right away and never told me nothing. They never called me. They never emailed me nothing like that. And I had to find out the hard way. And then the uh, then the customer service department, they told me that oh I, I we we're not sure what happened to your account and I was like I'm not lying this she, she thinks I was lying when I mentioned my account but long story short don't make sure you, you take the risks accordingly when you went going out there so uh, yeah so anyway um, so that so that's uh, basically that um, that's why. Like I said, I lost respect for any. I used to respect Batista a lot because I've heard of, I've heard of some things he did backstage that were pretty good. But you know what? All that respect's been flushed down the toilet. I will still buy Batista's pay-per-view matches, like the one with uh, JBL or uh, Triple H at WrestleMania 2003, 2005. I think it was. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem watching his wrestling, although I haven't actually watched a Batista match, but that's just... Uh, he retired, that's, that's why. <laughs> that's why you haven't seen lately. I haven't watched a Batista match since uh, this uh, since this happened, but that's just coincidence, because uh, mm -hmm. a lot of times I'd like to find random stuff uh, to watch if I'm watching a wrestling match from the past. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, as a wrestler, he's great. But you know, as as a as a human being, you know your your my reputation your reputation uh, the reputation I have of you just just those dimes. Hmm. And for anyone who thinks uh, Batista, you know, oh well, I'm just one person. Uh, I don't have many uh, people that watch my content, so why would anyone care? Keep in mind, other people feel the same way. I mean, look at the NBA when they went over to uh, bowel movement. 
The NBA's latest game brought in less than a million viewers. That's crazy. Uh, the NFL, um, uh, their last four games brought in somewhere between uh, like twenty, like twenty to twenty-four million viewers, and the last four games the year before brought in anywhere between twenty-six to thirty-five million viewers. It's getting too political. That's why, and in the COVID nineteen yeah. situation. And 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 the thing is, the only reason uh, the NFL did so good as it did good as it was, which is not at all. Um, they like they had games like on ABC, Nickelodeon, ESPN two and three. They had to have simulcast on multiple channels, and they still couldn't reach the numbers they did last year. Hmm. And like on Nickelodeon, they were trying to give it gimmick up the games for the kids. Like they had virtual slime cannons that went off when a touchdown happened, and they were like explaining the rules of the game. I and see. And they still uh, because they're. And why are they going through all this extra work? Because they're, um, because they're hemorrhaging viewers because of they decided to get political and woke, and now they're trying to, uh, they're trying to recoup those losses. And don't forget about the COVID nineteen because since twenty what twenty of March, just the lockdown and the redistribution of the wealth has started to. Uh, climb to the the billionaire cycle or billionaire uh, essence of, of society so the people at the top they're okay making whatever they're making from the COVID-19 but the average everyday viewer of of the NBA or any of that stuff we're like the grunts we're the ones who work the, the stands the popcorn or fast food or gas stations and we can we can buy stuff yes but what, once they take the buying power away from us customers and try to stimulate us with like stimulus checks and stuff like that. It's temporary, but in the long run, we still lose business. So it's COVID nineteen. Right. It's but, the politicians, you know. But the thing is, here's another thing: shouldn't these games have more viewers because everyone's stuck at home due to COVID nineteen? I would say that to myself. I, I I'm home most of my time, and I don't watch NBA anymore. I, I right. I'm one of those. <laughs> But the thing is, that's the thing. You know, last year there was no lockdown. People could go out. They could do whatever they wanted. This year, well, last, well, 2019, there was no lockdown. Uh, 2020 and this year, lockdowns, and you're still doing worse numbers than you did when there were no lockdowns. Mm -hmm. That's how you know that you made the wrong decision. That's why the NBA started their earliest, uh, they just started a new season back in December. Uh, they started it like right before or right after Christmas, which is really early for them. And the reason they started it is because the season before that ended uh, did such horrible business because they wanted to get political. They wanted to get uh, social. Ju they wanted to be social justice warriors, and people said, "No, you, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not watching anymore." Yeah, and they still and not. You know, they 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 not really impacting the people because they're not. They don't represent the public accordingly because most of the basketball players are making millions of dollars so how can right. you have to be discriminated towards and you're a black person who can buy whatever you want to buy have any girl you want to have and go any place else in the world you want to go and still have leftover money to, do, to help out your, your community they don't do that and if they do do that like LeBron James is one example okay that's fine it's one exception but the rest of the basketball players they're not they're not helping out their communities and if they are there's like very little like you probably give like a thousand to like some school and that's it go fuck yourselves type situation you know excuse my language right so it's i mean so that's that's the point i'm trying to make you know if you think i'm in the minority opinion of this uh ask how much business or how many viewers the nba and the nfl lost when they started uh bending the knee to bow movement mm -hmm. and uh and uh, when you find out that's in the millions of viewers that both companies lost, uh, maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm the guy that's right. <laughs> You're yeah, Mr. Right, Mr. Rapper <laughs> JJJ. You want to talk about video games now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, hey, why not? I mean, this is because uh, because it's a tech it's a tech issue as well with, with Donald Trump with all this lockdowns and stuff. So we have to keep people in the loop that, hey guys, honestly, all of us are gamers. We love playing games. We think about games. We sleep on games. We 
do games, but in the end, we get older, we're more feasible and members of society to be honored, to be bestowed upon as we get older, meaning that as you get older, you're more a backbone of society. So if we don't participate in the matter, if we don't participate in our politics and government, then it'll falter and your games might be out of sync or out of whatever, or what's going on right now, you know. In the so sense, there'll, there'll, there'll always be emulators and ROMs, and the physical games you have will always, and even the downloaded games. Like if you download a game digitally, as long as it's already downloaded, nothing definitely. can ha definitely happen to it. You know, I tried to download this uh, the Sega Saturn emulator from um, MetaStar or Met Met Meta Dearth or whatever it's called. And I, mm -hmm. I finally found it, I finally was able to, to make it the, the game play itself. Problem though is that I cannot find the functionality of the gun of the guns with with on my PC that can be connected properly. Oh yeah, the guns. No, um, it, you, you might you might be out of luck uh, if you're talking about like a what would be classified as a light gun game, unless, mm -hmm. unless you want to play it with the controller, like moving the cursor with the D-pad. You might be out of luck with those shooters. Yeah, I, I could have sworn I can do it, but I guess I cannot. I have to, I either I have to complex, I have to literally get into the programming and fix everything myself, and or I can hire someone to help me guide me through the matter and see what we can well, fix the matter. if you hire someone, A, they might not, they might uh, charge you a lot of money and they might not even get you the result that you want. Yeah. But at the same, but at the same time, um, you just it it just um, like me uh, when even when I played emulators on my laptop, uh, I had to do I had to use uh, I could only play games that were um, that used an actual controller. Like if it was a light gun game, like say I wanted to play Duck Hunt, I would have to use either the mouse to control the cursor, or I would have to use the controller to move the cursor. So I don't know I don't know if it's even possible. Yeah, certain games don't, don't accept the fact they use a mouse to, to move around the target. Because in yeah. Virtual Cop in Virtual Cop Two, uh those two yeah. games you have to have a constant connection with the gun. Or mm -hmm. if you have it compatible that is that's if you can make it compatible. So Right. Yeah, so uh it you just might be out of luck with those games. But then again when you think about all the video games out there, the thousands of old school video games you're just gonna have to pick something else, I guess. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about a video game that we've talked about before, though. Uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Uh, you remember that I told you about the drive-by mission where, when you start that mission, the game is locked at zero stars, so you can basically ex uh, explore wherever you want um, during that mission. Uh. Do you remember I, that? I remember when I remember when you had to circle around like several times to, to the same spot to, to shoot down the um those those purple gang purple color gang guys. You know what oh, I'm talking the about? The ballers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, well, anyway, um, did you know that there's a way you can beat Grand Theft Auto San Andreas like in five minutes? Who who? Wait, and what? What's that? You can beat Grand Theft Auto San Andreas in like five, ten minutes, and you'll get a different ending if you do it this way. Wow. <laughs> what you have to do is, uh, right at the beginning of the game, when Tenpenny, Pulaski, and their third partner uh, drop you off in Bala territory and leave you with no money, and and leave you with no money, what you okay. have to do is get a you have to get a bike or a car, and you have to get to the police station before they do. Uh, go in the parking garage, and there should be a police car there. Go in the police car, then exit the police car, so you got the shotgun. Uh, because every Grand Theft Auto game, at least you know, on a PS2 era, if you enter the police car, you always got the shotgun with five shots. Mm-hmm. And then when Tenpenny, Pulaski, and their partner come down into the parking garage, all three of them, and the game will end, and Ryder and Big Smoke will say that they were working uh, with the ballers because Tenpenny was forcing them. But since you killed Tenpenny, uh, they're they're loyal to Grove Street again, and then the game ends. 
that is so weird because when because you kill Ryder and at the at the harbor over uh, Easter Basin, and then you kill Big yeah. Smoke at the end of the game after several hours of gameplay, and not even several hours, I mean like 25, 30 hours of gameplay at least. So yeah, but there's a way. There's actually a way that um, if you kill Ten Penny Pulaski and uh, their partner in the beginning of the game, uh, the game will end. And Big Smoke and Ryder uh, basically say uh, they were working with the Ballers because Ten Penny because they were being forced by Ten Penny. That must have taken like decades to figure that out. It took about yeah, because it came up. Yeah, who would think go to the police station, get some weapons, and kill Pulaski, Ten Penny, and their partner before they get back to the police station? <laughs> <laughs> And there's also something like where I think um, in the mission that you brought up with Ryder, where like you chase him off like a pier or something. Yep, yeah, an Easter based him. Uh, I heard I think like if you act like a far too far behind, Ryder actually survives. And like uh, I forgot how I forgot how it's done, so I'm not too familiar with it. Maybe I'll look it up and talk about it next next time. But um, there is actually a way where. Wider survives that mission, and he joins, and he and he joins your side again. So if I let him chase chase into the sunset, somewhere out in the water, and I lost him, he come back later on in the game in a sense. No, no. Uh, there's some way that you, there's something you do during the mission. I think you, I, I think it's you let him get away, but not too far away. But like you're not right behind him either. And like uh, when he was about to fall off the pier, like he catches himself, and he and he agrees to team up with, and he agrees to be loyal to you again. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. I don't. With that part, I don't know. I'm not really sure ex exactly how you do it, so I would have to like look up videos and see it. But uh, yeah, if you want to end the game in five minutes, just uh, kill Flavsky, Ted Penny, and their partner right away. Yeah, and that was it Menendez. Yes, whatever. I don't know. It's, it's the guy they killed in Whetstone. Pretty much, he died, he, he, his name was Menendez, most likely, or Rodriguez. Well, I think Rodriguez actually. Yeah, I have to but, play that game again. Do a let's play or something. <laughs> yeah, so like next time you play it, start a new game and see if you can get to the police station before they can. Uh. <laughs> I don't know if, if I can. Want, I, 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 I have to memorize it. Around, you can just play the long way. Yeah. All right. So, um, what's next? Um, I got a question for you. Uh, what are your favorite pick up and play games? Games that you just pick up, like games that someone could just pick up, play. You play them for like twenty minutes, and then like you're done. Hmm. Or you know, games that you don't have to learn the controls or anything. You can just play it right off the bat. Well, I, it's like a mixture of both, where I played it 20 years ago, 30 years ago almost, many hours, but then I stopped after I got, got the game like five years ago. It's called Jurassic Park for the Game Boy Color, or Game Boy Original. Oh, wow. Yeah, basically I bought the game, well, my mom and my whoever, my, my, you know, my, my mom and my dad, or whoever at the time, you know, they bought it for me, and then I lost that it was stolen, and I was in, and long story short, you know, I, I finally got the game decades later, which is like five years ago, and I played it for about 20, at most 25 minutes, and I was like, you know what, I beat the level, it took me 25 minutes, it's too tiresome, it's not my game for now, I'll keep it for collectors of purpose only. Okay, so but that game you could anyone could pick up and play, and they wouldn't have a problem picking up the controls. Well, I mean, if you can afford, you know, ten, fifteen dollars at a time used, that's if you can find it right now. This is like t five okay. years ago, because as okay, again, as it, as it, time, it, that game have easy controls. Something like that, yeah. You have to memorize okay. them in order to understand the prop, the the way to switch, make those switches happen, they all open the gate. The first level. Okay. Um, any other pick up play and play games that are your favorite? Mm. Well, it's hard to tell because for the last five, ten years, I've been playing a lot of Halo game, uh, like Master Chief Collection, right. Halo Three, Halo Reach, 
So I didn't have like one of those times in my life for the last 10 years to say, oh, I want to play this game for about five minutes and then keep it as a collection. Well, that's it. So. Well, I'm, to- I'm talking. I'm talking like even as a child. Um. Oh, the Bugs Bunny game. I forget the name of it. It's called the Bugs Bunny the Castle. The Castle Crazy Mansion. Castle? What's that? Crazy Castle? I think it's what it's called, yeah. The first Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle game. Oh, wow. You got you enjoyed that game? It was all right. You know, I, I played it with my friend. He had That was his game. Uh, oh, okay. like, I don't remember his name, though. I remember what his face... I think I remember what his face looked like, but... It was like back in fucking fifth grade, tenth, fifth grade or seventh grade. Oh no, it was fifth grade or third grade. One of those, one of those years because back in third grade I was still in the Queen's School and that was a horrible experience altogether. So that's why I'm able to remember, remember, remember these these games I played because they were my my escape from reality. Because back in the nineties, dude, a kid could be beating the crap up by other kids and he dies from it. It just happens in my neighborhood, right, right, right next to the tennis courts where you see you see my room outside with the window. If you were in here, in my apartment, that that yeah. happens. You no, know, you have to escape from oh, that wow. somehow. You no. Know? Right. Okay. Um, some of my favorite pick up and play games um, on Nintendo. Um, I love Kung Fu and Marvel Madness. Okay. Those, those are two of my favorite games that um, you really wouldn't. You really wouldn't play more than twenty minutes. Marble Madness, you wouldn't play more like than ten minutes. Uh, um, Crazy Taxi is another one. Hey, good things about that game. Thanks for the Dreamcast. Uh, yeah, you 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 are not quite do that. I couldn't understand you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I, I said I said Crazy Taxi. I heard it was a good game. It has it was good on the Dreamcast. Yeah, and it's on Xbox 360. I think it was even a Games with Gold one month. I think I got that game for free. Yeah, I still got it after all these years. I haven't you played it yet, but I'll play it one day as a Let's Play if I have to. <laughs> I have over 400 games I collected with Xbox alone, so... Because of the that's games with gold. That's not, an, that's not an excuse, and I'll show you why later. Okay. <laughs> okay, Mr. No Life, if you are No Life. <laughs> that's not that's not it either, because I, I, I honestly haven't been playing... Uh, that many games, um, I've, because uh, I've actually been finding work on my uh, as a writer. So, okay, uh, it's it's my writing job. It's not giving me as many assignments as it used to, but it's much better than it was, say, like at the end of December when there was nothing day in day out because of the holidays, of course. Yeah, and yeah, so like, but like ever since January second or third. It's just been so much easier to find at least one job for the day. That's know? good. But um, they make your so chicken dinner any, meal. So anyway, back to our favorite pick up and play games. Um, so yeah, Kung Fu, Marvel Madness, Crazy Taxi. Um, I guess you could pick up. I guess you could put Crash Your Luck on there for the PlayStation Three. Okay. Because even though because my mom even though she doesn't. Uh, it's, she doesn't like. It's not that she doesn't like games. It's that she just doesn't wouldn't know how to turn it on and play it herself. Really? She, but but like when uh, my younger brother was here and we had three PlayStation three controllers, my mom, myself, and my younger brother, we all played Press Your Luck against one another, and my mom loved it. Press Your Luck? That's a game. You know, yeah. You never heard of the game show Press Your Luck? Never heard of the game show or the game video game. Mm. I heard of uh, these dating games from the 1970s and such, but that's about it. Um, there's also the game shows like you know, Wheel of Fortune, you know, The Price is Right, Deal or No Deal. Yeah, in the late 80s and early 90s, um, Pest Your Luck was re- really popular. Then it came back in 2001 as Whammy, the all-new Pest Your Luck. I see. And then it just came back uh, like a year or two ago. Uh, that it's it only they only play it during the summer though. I see. <clears throat> so um, I guess I'll have to link you uh, because I did a let's play a press your luck. Uh, I'll I'll link you the video on Discord so okay. you can watch it. Um, yeah. So I guess those would be my favorite pick up and play games. Um, 
those are the only ones I can think of. Because, you know, none of those games take a long time. And they're fun for, you know, like, I like Kung Fu and Marvel Madness, but I'm not going to play it more than, either one more than 20 minutes. Yeah. And regardless how much I like it. Crazy Taxi, I do maybe a couple rounds in the arcade mode. I might do one 10 minute uh, thing, one 10 minute game, and then I'll be, and then I'll be done with it. You know, it's 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 fun. It's it, it gets it it's there. It, you know, it's um it's entertaining and short first. Right. I I will admit this though. I actually considered not considered, but I cheated GTA San Andreas as like a, a pick me up quick game where I play. I put put in the disc tray for like you know put it in and then play for five minutes and then just like don't play for months if not years on end. That's what happened to me back in like seven, six years ago. I was like, you know what? I can't play this game anymore. It's too repetitive. I don't know what's going to happen in this shit. <laughs> just, just like Grand Theft Auto Three, I can't play that anymore. Uh, that's why. That's why, like, when I play games on stream, I no longer play games I've already beaten. Definitely. Whether I beat it on or off stream, the only way I'll play the game again is if I need footage for a review, or Otherwise, if it's going to be a remake. Like Final um, Fantasy Seven. Otherwise, why would otherwise why play the game again? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to play um, Final Fantasy Seven as one example with my well, with the audience that that I kind of have, but uh, as a let's play of so so like play an hour here, two hours there, and come back five hours later and we record again, <laughs> that type of fashion because um, it's a long game, Final Fantasy Seven. Obviously, okay. so. and and because I said uh, how yeah, four hundred games is not an excuse. I want to show you what I was talking about. Okay. Uh, I've done this on stream actually a couple times. Yeah, just on uh, Xbox this... alone, I have over four hundred games. <laughs> okay, you see, uh, do you, are you, you're still on my Twitch channel, correct? Uh, not quite. I can go there right now. Okay, let me know when you're there. Because I want to sh I want to show you something. Okay, go ahead. Okay, you're on my Twitch channel. Yes, I am. Okay, do you see the website I'm on with the like a colored wheel? Yeah, what about the wheel of fortune? Yeah. Not wheel of fortune, but I'll explain. On the right hand side, it's every game I have that I, that I could possibly play. Digital games, physical games. PlayStation 1, 2, 3, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Nintendo. They're all on this list on the right hand side. Wow. So when I need to decide a game. So when I need to decide what game I'm gonna stream next, I shuffle up the list, I hit the shuffle, spin the wheel, and let's see what game I'll play next. Hmm. Did you type in all this stuff manually? Yeah. The Man, it took you a while, I bet. And the next game I'll play is Swim Sanity, if this was a real selection. Swim Sanity. Oh wow. That's that's a uh, Xbox. Um, that's an Xbox uh, One game with gold. Right, right. But that yeah, I put it in the list alphabetically. That you can shuffle it up as many times as you want. Spin the wheel, whatever game it lands on, try it out. And because the thing is, if I chose what games I was gonna play on stream, I'd be sticking to the division. I'd be sticking to uh, The Walking Dead, A New Frontier. I'd be sticking to certain games, and I'd be and I'd be not even trying other games that I may like or I may hate. Right. With that, hey Miller time, but with that wheel I showed, it's just it. You know, it. It. I won't be as. I won't be. Uh, I won't be uh, favoring certain games other over other games. I'll right. Be, you know. Any game that I ha physically have, I could possibly end up playing next on the stream. And that's a way that I play games I like, but also end up trying new ones that I still have. And then if I don't happen to not like a game or beat a game, I just remove it from the list. Okay. So, so yeah, so that, um, that. That's the that's how, that's how I decide at the end of every stream what I'm gonna play next. Um, so anyway, um, next topic. Uh, let me pull it up. 
Oh, did you hear that there might be a new Punch Out game? A remake or a, a port of it? Um, I think it's gonna be like uh, it's. I think it's gonna be like uh, the Wii one where they'll have like characters from the past versions, but they might also have new characters. Oh, like Floyd Mayweather or uh, Pacquiao, those type of boxers. Not those type. They'll probably have like guys like King Hippo, Soda Pumpinski, Bald Bull. Um, but they'll but the but like the Wii version had a new fighter named Disco Kid. Disco Kid. Wait, so basically these are not like your real life uh, boxers, but fake no, boxers. No, boxers. Oh, okay, never mind. It would be nice if they actually put a real box in the game. Have you ever played any of the Punch Out games? Unfortunately, not, I've seen gameplay of it at the arcade, maybe, but that's about it. But uh, <laughs> I don't remember the exact details because it's been so long. It's been like 25 years ago, at least. All right. So I mean, there was there was two Punch Outs on Nintendo. It was Mike Tyson's Punch Out, then Punch Out. Mm -hmm. Then it was on the Super Nintendo with Super Punch Out. And then there was Punch Out on the Wii, and uh, you think it would be cool to do Pacquiao and those guys? That would be cool. Um, I just would be worried about contract issues. You know, if you used real life boxers, you would have to get licensing and um, contracts with everyone that was in the game. Right. And I don't know. I don't know what the status of Fight Night is. And Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao. Fight Night was kind of like a real. Um, Fight Night was like a real life boxing. It had real life boxers in it. Okay. But Punch Out was basically for kids. Uh, it had flashy graphics. It had, uh, um, it had uh, people like Gabby J. And uh, I forgot what the I forgot what the French guy's name was. Um, French anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. It was like Joe Glass or something. Um, right. But, but yeah, so uh, we haven't had a Punch-Out game since the Wii. And from I, I didn't get to play it that much, but they had modes in there, like uh, where you go for the championship and then you get to defend the title. Um, so Punch-Out, you know, maybe they add in more characters, more characters than ever before. And maybe they even get Mike Tyson or somebody to be the final boss. Um, Again, like in the original Punch Out. Uh huh. Uh, you know, I mean, heck, they could do it with Mike Tyson if they wanted. They could get any boxer really they wanted, um, if he was, if they were willing to do it. Yeah. So I mean, I would be interested in the Punch Out game just because I thought the Wii was really good, and I've played every Punch Out that there is. Hmm. Interesting. So, so you just were never a fan of Punch Out, or it just flew under your radar, or something like that. It flew under my radar because uh, Punch Out came out. The original Punch Out came out back in what nineteen eighty and what seven, eighty eight. So I was oh, a baby, my... and my so dad didn't baby. buy it for me when I before he died. So uh, Miller Times asking, who's your favorite boxer on the original Punch Out for Nintendo? This is the one that had Mike Tyson as the final boss. Um, I guess King Hippo. Was was one was one that um, always stood out to me. Glass Joe, that was that was his name. Glass Joe, the French guy. Um, Glass Joe always stood out to me because he was the very first person you fought. But um, I think King Hippo was one of my favorites. Okay. Miller time. Uh, if you want, uh, who was your favorite fighter on the original Punch Out? Um, the next. Topic we have, uh, oh, uh, some news about Resident Evil 8. Uh, yes. Yours was Piston Honda. I, I forgot about him. He was in uh, he was in Punch Out 2, and then I think, but I think they had to change his name in the Wii version to like Pistol Piston Hondo or something. Okay. Uh, Doctor Games 101's never played Punch Out, so he doesn't really have a uh, favorite. I don't think he would have a favorite character. Unfortunately, no, my friend. I never played Punch Out directly. I've seen gameplay of it, maybe when I was a baby or a teenage, not teenager, but when I was maybe a child. But that's about it. I don't remember everything, so. <laughs> so we uh, talked about Resident Evil Eight in previous podcast episodes. Um, 
But did you know that uh, Resident Evil 8 originally started out as Resident Evil Revelations 3? What? Really? Yeah. When res when they started making Resident Evil 8, that it was a, for a long time in development, it was uh, planned as the third Resident Evil Revelations game. It wouldn't make any sense anyway because in Resident Evil Revelations 2, you, you're basically like revamping the game to play as Clara Barrett. And that's it. Because Resident Evil Revelations 1 was originally supposed to be for the Game Boy Color game of Leon and Barrett. You know, Barrett, Barry Ooh. Burton. So. Was it Resident Evil Revelations, like uh, Xbox 360, the first one? Yes. And I think that was like Chris and Jill, was it not? Uh, Jill and some other character. I don't know about the... Jill and some other character, that's right. Yes, and we I don't know the that's... other character. <laughs> That's how that's how Resident Revelation One wasn't really that impactful, but it still made yeah, make strides. It still made yeah, good I played, reviews. I played it once, and I, I don't even think I ever played two. So, I just started playing uh, it like last year. I, don't, I, st I stopped playing it for almost like, uh, over six months now. So, so I mean, uh, did you ever get further? Like, in, I only played like the first hour. I kind of got stuck as I do in most Resident Evil games. Um, did do you, what do you think of the Resident Evil Revelation series? Were you hoping they were going to make a third one? Do you think it was an experiment that ran its course? Well, I think that Resident Evil Revelation series, the sub-series of Resident Evil, it's it's not necessary because it's a revamp of what of the Game Boy Color game back in 1997, 1999 called uh, Resident Evil uh, something with Leon and Barry Burton, and that's it. That's okay. all. So, so they're basically, basically they keep remaking, rebooting these Resident Evil games, and it's like it's not worth it because I'm gonna stick with a sequel. Because Resident Evil Seven, I heard was all right to play, even though I had a new character involved. But in the end, Resident Evil Eight now they brought back Chris Redfield. I'm like, I want to play this game, Resident Evil Eight, for my Xbox One. So if they ever come out yeah, for another system. Well, the new character really doesn't matter because in Resident Evil 7, it's all first-person view instead of third-person. Right. Um, so you really never see the character. Like, sometimes you might see your own shadow or something. And instead of hundreds of zombies, it's just a few creepy people from the family that are, that are, that are like, I think they're possessed. They're like, they're like, they're like the Wyatt family for the WWE wrestler, but more scarier. <laughs> yeah, much more scarier. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget when playing Resident Evil 7, uh, I killed the uh, father of the family, or so I thought, that I was investigating some bathroom, and as I was about to leave the bathroom, he picked me up by the throat and threw me across the room, so wow. and he started walking towards me with like an axe or something, so I shot him in the face like four times, I take off, I make it two rooms down, and then I hear the guy scream, like uh, not scream in pain, but scream like he was angry. Yeah. And then he's and then, and then he's chasing me through the house. And I had to shoot him again three or four more times. And luckily, the second time he stayed down. <laughs> but I heard like you know, a woman that's like out cold on the second floor. She comes to life later in the game and becomes an enemy. Then you got uh, that uh, woman that was chasing your girlfriend around in the videos you found. So. I mean, I would play it again. It's just I don't know. I'm I'm stuck on how to do a certain objective, which is why I haven't played it. You might have to mm -hmm. unlock some keys. You might have to find some keys and stuff because uh, I said I had to get to the dissection room. I just couldn't figure out how to get there. I end up keep like keep going around it. It's like how do I get to this room? You know, I can't get there. So how you know? Um, well, you might have to play. You might have to play a little bit of uh, going up down up and down the stairs and see what happens. I have to I have to look up a walkthrough because uh, some walkthroughs um, I actually mentioned this uh, the last time I played Resident Evil Seven there was a walkthrough and the person that was playing in the walkthrough actually died and I'm like I'm thinking to myself this is not a walkthrough this is a let's play <laughs> this is not showing me anything I don't already know and then I so I figure you know this video is not gonna help me I'll just have to find it myself that didn't work out so. Next time I play 7, Resident Evil 7, I'm going to have to look up a walkthrough on how to get to the dissection room. Right. But so, they, they uh, should have ended Resident Evil uh, on Resident Evil 6. Like, what they, what, what they should have done is uh, 
Okay, we have the Resident Evil live action movies. Those are over with for the time being. That's I thank God for that. Then there's also the oh, thank God for that. yeah. Now the CGI trilogy: Vendetta, Regeneration, and Damnation. With Rebecca Chambers at the end of Vendetta, that's it. The no more Resident Evil CGI movies. Now oh, with the video so, game. Don't, don't be so sure of that. Uh, remember what I told you two weeks ago that there was a new Resident Evil reboot uh, uh, that was scheduled for the end of this year. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's live action or CGI, but if you're talking about Resident, Resident Evil Man. Village or AKA Resident Evil Eight, then that's the, that's the sequel because the same character from Resident Evil Seven is in Resident Evil Eight. Oh wow! I did not know that. Or at least, or at least his voice is—I remember it from Resident Evil Seven because I saw gameplay. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, if you're playing the same character as Seven, as if you're playing, if you're playing in the same character as Resident Evil Seven and Resident Evil Eight, it can't be Chris Redfield because Resident Evil Seven, the protagonist, was someone brand new. Really? Because uh, Chris yeah. Redfield, you get to see at the end of the game or end of the trailer, I should say. Well, um, I'm just I'm just saying, Resident Evil Seven. You were basically the reason you got yourself in that situation is you were looking for your girlfriend who disappeared. Right. And your girlfriend was not Jill Valentine. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so I don't so I don't even think your name is Chris in Resident Evil Seven. So if you're the same protagonist in Seven and Eight, you're obviously not playing as Chris Redfield. Of course, because it's, it's, what happens is that at the end of the trailer, you see Chris Redfield shooting something mm -hmm. with a shotgun, and he's like, and, and the guy that you're playing as say, Chris, is that you? You know, as oh, like, okay. yeah. Well, yeah, you're not playing as Chris, but you might want into Chris Redfield. Or play him later on in the game, somehow, somewhere. Maybe, maybe like in a section like Resident Evil 3 when you played as Carlos for that section. I hope so. They have to because the guy in Resident Evil 7, the main protagonist, whoever that guy you control in Resident Evil 7, I, I don't connect with him. I, I don't know who he is really. I, oh, sorry, I read upon you, him. What's that? He's supposed to be you. That's why it's first person you the whole game. It's supposed to be you. Not really. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> I mean, think about think about it like in Doom. Uh, if you remember Doom from the '90s. Oh, the Doom that guy. Was, <laughs> the Doom guy. That that was first person view, and that was just proposed. That was just supposed to be you. It, it wasn't supposed to be a character you connected with. It was supposed to be, you know. You want to say that with Master Chief Collection? Then with Master Chief uh, with uh, Halo. <laughs> That's first person shooter. Yeah, but at the same time, none of us are named Master Chief. <laughs> and none of us have the Halo uh, outfit get-up, so... Yeah, we I'm don't have sure that armor and shit on. But like, a, but like Resident Evil 7 and Doom, you don't really know what the guy looks like in the actual game. So, you know. It, it's just... It, I, I just don't like the fact that the last two or three Resident Evils, the last uh, Resident Evil CGI movie, you know, they they ended very, very well with Vendetta. That was good. But then all of a sudden with the games themselves, they're milking it. And I don't like that. They're milking it too much. They gotta end the series right now. It's been it's been 25 years since Resident Evil 1. Can you believe yeah. that? Like, it's been since 1997, 98, when I got the Director's Cut Edition. Of the first Resident Evil, then I got Resident Evil 2 for the N64, Resident Evil 3 for the PlayStation 1, you know, and then and we'll mass, what's it called, Resident Evil 4 for Leon, and we play again, and PlayStation 2, one of the best games of all time, you know. Yep. It was good for its prime, but the, the mechanic... After four, after 4, it started to get ridiculous. Yeah, it was like, come on now, Resident Evil 6 now was like... Like an action pack movie, it was a good, yeah. but it's action. But we're expecting like horror play, horror gameplay. And, that, and that's not even, and that's not even taking these spinoffs into into account. Like Resident Evil Operation Resident Raccoon Hated, City. I like Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Um, <laughs> then you had Resident Evil Dead Aim, Resident Evil Survivor, Resident Evil. Um, what other spinoffs? The Rail Shooter. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, the Umbrella and Darkseid Chronicles, which are also good games. Don't forget the other one, too. The one with the gun con. For PS2? Um, yeah, there was, uh, I think there was Dead Aim. Okay. And Survivor. And, and I think Dead Aim and Survivor were part of a trilogy, so there might be another game like that. So, yeah, if you, if there's been tons of Resident Evil games over, like, the last 25 years, um, I just don't think, I, I, I but... You know, I don't know. Maybe they don't want to end the series because they felt there would be no way to restart it once they did end it. Mm, they did with Resident Evil 6 and 5. I mean, it was standalone Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6. So you ended up... You get what, here's my situation. Just bring back all the first three Resident Evil characters, Rachel, who are still alive from the games themselves, like, like Barry Burton. Uh, right. Um, who else? Jill Valentine, Chris Redfield, Rebecca Chambers, Ada Wong. I think Leon and Claire. Leon and Claire, they're those two, and then do like a like a three like a three version, four version campaign like they in Resident Evil Six, like with the two okay, the two players. Stories. Yeah, and then put them together. If it's fine with them, make sure you want to play more of the other one, other uh, campaigns. And then ended at that at the with Leon and Claire or Leon and Chris, you know, and that's it, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, because Leon is, is, the, is, the, is the is the number one uh, pick for uh, for Resident Evil gameplay. Right. I mean, well, you know, I'm I'm, I'm I want to see what uh, uh, I never played Resident Evil Revelations much, um, but I'm surprised that. Uh, just like somewhere in development, they said, oh, this is going to be Resident Evil 8, not Resident Evil Revelations 3. But I didn't even know they were considering a third Resident Evil Revelations game. Mm hmm. If Capcom is listening to this, if at any given time between now and the, and the, until the summer of 2021 before the release of Resident Evil 8, please, guys, if Capcom, please finish the series because. I'm getting old, you're getting old, whoever's the creator of uh, Resident Evil and uh, Devil May Cry, time to sum up Devil May Cry, time, which you did, like, thank God for that, you summed up that game, now try to sum up Resident Evil. It's been 25 years for Resident Evil, come on now guys. And the guy who, who, was, who probably created Resident Evil is going, Bleh. No, he'd be like, yeah man, I should, I should. Because the, because the original creators are not there anymore, I bet, after 25 then, years. Well, you never know. They might be. <laughs> yeah, like one or one, two of them. Like that with Bungie and uh, 343 Industries. Okay. Um, this one I don't really remember too much about, but I'll bring it up just in case you heard about it. Uh, developer refuses to censor sense a cyberpunk ghost story. Did you hear about this? I heard about it from Angry Joe the other uh, day or two or three because uh, there was this uh, standalone cyberpunk story uh, puzzle type of game you play on 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 the uh, SteamPower.com shop. Okay. And uh, I saw gameplay of it. It looked all right to play, but uh, there's not much like nudity until you play more of it. So I, it's not, it's a like, you have to be like very desperate for it. <laughs> so, uh, so let me guess. Uh... People wanted him to censor the nudity, and the developer told the, those people where they could jump off a cliff. Or or to get rid of the, the big boobs for the characters, at least that. Okay, and the developer and the developer said he's not doing that, so... I hope, you know, I hope he doesn't comply. You know what? Good for him. If he, you know, I mean, we were talking about censorship in the beginning of this podcast. If you should create the game that you want, and as long as it's rated correctly... You should be able to put in there what you want. And I mean, we've had games that push the issue as far as nudity goes. Look at Wumble Roses, Wumble Roses XX, uh, the Playboy Mansion, the game. They had nudity in those games. Uh, the Guy game, which is, has so much nudity, it's illegal. And the Larry games, the Larry Guy. Yeah, Lisa Larry. Yeah, so these games, you know, I mean, the way I look at it, I'm glad the developer stuck to his guns and said, no, I like the game the way I have it. You don't like it, don't play it. That that I think I think all developers should be like that. And all and all people who create anything, 
uh, whether it be books, movies, TV shows, as long as you're not like breaking the rules uh, of the like station, or as long as um, the rating, as long as the right safeguards are in place, so five year olds not coming across it. Um, and that would be the parents' fault because it was it would be rated X or rated M for mature. Right. You know, you should you should be able to create what you want. I mean, once we give up the rights to create what we want, because it has to be censored. That's another one of our rights that are gone. Uh, so I, I, so I totally side with the developer refusing to censor his game, his uh, game. Uh. Um, next, uh, the 3DS and DSiWare games are being removed from the eShop. Uh, what happened? Uh, what I think is happening is um, the 3DS and DSiWare these systems are like 10, 15 years old. And the eShop, it, they're just, uh, games have been being taken off. But yeah. so many have been taken off that it's now recognizable. Huh. So, um, but the thing is, you know, the 3DS, uh, I'm surprised that they would be removing games from that sh- from that eShop. Because we heard, like, uh, they were planning to add N64 games to the Wii U Virtual Console. And I'm sure they will for the, for the newest system for the uh, Nintendo Switch. That's it. Well, Nintendo Switch really doesn't have a virtual console. That's why they were adding it to the Wii U one. Hmm. But um, N6, uh, the Switch just allows you to play some games. It's whatever games Nintendo felt like adding. But they didn't even have an N64 section. As far as I know, they've only released NES and Super Nintendo games. And only a certain number. But, but um, remember, too, they came out with that trilogy... Uh, for that's going out until April or uh, April or March. Until April or March, it's yeah. not going to stop selling that that game. That's why we that's, have yeah, Mario 64. Super Mario, Super Mario um, the 3D uh, trilogy. Uh, they had Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. Definitely. Yep. Uh, that trilogy's actually that's trilogy is only going to be around for a couple more months. Uh, two and a half, four months. If only we get the two thousand dollars check for government. So many people have purchased it. You'll be able to find a copy, you know, two, three years down the road for for not a lot of money. Yeah, unless you want to get it right away for for a few bucks. I bet you so many people purchased it that you're not gonna have to worry about it disappearing. (laughs) Especially if you transfer your accounts to different uh, a a device and then sell that device with the game on it to that person and all you gotta do is unlock it by just buying the game again with your account as a new person so that would be nice to have that kind of feature on the Nintendo Switch if you want to buy it used I don't think they could I don't think you could do that because if you because if you have it how could you buy it again and if you're not on your account how could you buy it from someone else it's not like well, I, what I'm trying to say is that it's like, it's like a computer, pretty much. Let's say, for example, which obviously is pretty obvious, I had um, like 3,000 songs of like everything from like dance to hip hop and stuff like that. And you cannot find these songs anywhere else on the internet because LimeWire is shut down, Pirate Bay is being monitored, and Kim.com's mega upload has been censored severely. So what to do? You buy it from the guy that got the 3,000 songs and you not only get the 3,000 songs, you also get like a terabyte of hard drive that comes with it uh, externally, the whatever. That, that, if, I, if I was to sell my computer, that is. And all I do is take out my account, log off, delete all the cache, delete all the cookies, delete all the files, the, the, the internet files, and that's it, you know? And then I'll just like say, hey, just Here's my here's my old password and that's it. You know, is that connect uh, one thing? You could do that. You could do that, but that's uh, but that's but you know they would. But the thing is, um, but the thing is, you would still have to leave your username on, because if you like put your if you reset back to factory's default before you sell sold your computer, you would have uh, everything would be gone, including all those songs. Unless you do a, if you keep it on keep on the files as an option. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, but then you would just have to delete everything else, like your automatic logins and stuff like that. Of course. Um, 
but you know, like I said, I just don't see Super Mario 3D uh, trilogy uh, disappearing. I bet you so many people ordered it. People still have time to order it for the next two and a half months. Um, and I think uh, I think that enough orders came in where if you want to find it, it'll probably be like Super Mario uh, All Stars 25th anniversary. The, uh, your Super Nintendo cartridge costs like eighty dollars if you want to buy uh, your Super Nintendo version, but the Wii version that I have sells for like ten dollars online. Hmm, interesting. And that was a twenty-fifth anniversary game, so this was thirty-fifth uh, anniversary, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I still have my I still have my Super Mario All Stars for the, for a Super Nintendo. It'll be valuable. I still have mine for, I still have mine for the Wii. So yeah. it's so I. That's what I'm saying. I think enough people purchased it to the point where it's not going to disappear so easily because sooner or later people are going to get sick of it because even if you can't buy the trilogy, these three games are not hard to find. Unless you want to play the old system games from the system themselves, that's going to cost you a bundle. Yeah, if you have to buy the system yourself, that, that then you would need a, some money, yeah. But I still have my N64, so I guess I hell I still have my Super Mario 64 game I bought like like over five seven years ago. So Super Mario 64 is another game I can't play anymore. Played it so much. It's not that um, bad. It's just that you get stuck after a while with the same levels and you try to beat Bowser for like the fifteen thousand time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. It's just I played Super Mario 64 so much in its original form. That it's that it's just like uh, that it's just it's played out to me, right? Because I played it so many times. A um, memorized the levels. I never actually beat it to be honest. Really? Oh. Yeah, I beat. I never could. I when you face Bowser for the third time in the game, I think it was Bowser in the sky, and like you had to throw him on the spikes three times, and after the second time. Uh, the platform would break down into like that star shaped pattern and you were like five feet away from the spike so you had to get like a really good swing on bowser mm. i never i never could do that uh my friend actually unlocked um he got he had all 120 stars i don't know if he did that uh by putting the work in or by using a game shark code um but I heard there was like a, another star, an extra star to add on to the, the to the addition to the collection, the 121st star. You ever heard of that one yeah, before? I, I forgot how how were you uh, were, uh, how did you how were you supposed to get the 121st star? Do you remember? Oh man, I had watched that video like like two years ago. I don't remember the exact details, but it's something to do with uh, completing certain levels on time or at the right moment and then you get the star originally from the castle itself so okay um yeah because i heard like if you beat bowser x um oh bowser in the sky um which was the final bowser i heard that when you beat him since he's the final boss he gives you a star instead of um a key um but yeah, I don't. I, I remember hearing about 121st Star, but I don't remember how to get it. Right. And um, but back to games being removed from the uh, DSi and 3DS eShop. Um, that's why actually I I already purchased uh, Super Mario RPG: Legend of the Seven Stars and the first Donkey Kong Country on my Wii U uh, eShop, so I can play both those games right off my Wii U. And I plan to get Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3 uh, before too long, so that way, when if they ever do shut the Wii U Virtual Console down, uh, I already have the games that I want. Right. Okay. On the Wii U. Yeah, it's just very hard to find uh, Donkey Kong Country 1 on, on Super Nintendo for like not even 50 bucks, if you're lucky. That's how like, rare it is on, on Amazon and eBay. Some, or, hell, you have to buy go to other websites mm -hmm. to find it. In my perspective, that's what happened to me. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to price charting right now. And look that up. Donkey Kong Country. One, yeah, uh, the first Super one. Nintendo. Yeah, I'll check Amazon uh, right now. Let's see. On now, I'm I'm looking up the loose prices. Um, pre own. Uh, that's the manual. I was okay. right. It's fifty one bucks on on. on 
on um, Amazon. I knew I was right. Really? Yeah, it's 50 bucks I had last <laughs> time I checked. For a used. For used, I see 23.49 with free shipping. Really? What website? Yeah. Uh, Amazon. I went to price charting, I clicked the Amazon link. I, I, I did a search in, in all, and I typed in Donkey Kong Country Renewed, or Donkey Kong Country 1. I'll, I'll, I'll show I'll show it to you. Yeah, I'm looking at, at your screen right now on um, uh, Twitch. Hold on a second. This this is this is where I am. Hold on. Give me one second. I'll be there to see your screen. Okay. Oh wow, that's the cheapest. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, that's, so that's that's the Amazon offers. Price charting has some in the store itself. Yep. Uh, that's not in too good condition. But they make me buy more, I bet. That's why. <laughs> uh, and GameStop. Let's see if they have it. Um, A GameStop? Of all places? No. You have to go to the Manhattan uh, for that. The Manhattan location for that. Yeah, they. Yeah, they do have it. Yeah, Manhattan. Well. I don't know where which GameStop, but I can I can uh, deliver I can get it delivered, or I can get it in the store for uh, pickup, and uh, I can pick it up in the store. Well, they that, now they're reselling. So they're reselling. It's, it's not that it's not that expensive. Oh wow, I can't believe it because yeah. because back five seven years ago they stopped selling Super Nintendo. And Genesis and other older games like Saturn and others, you know, they stopped doing well, it for the last few the years. Thing is, they came, the thing is, like five years ago, they came back because they realized people uh, they were losing out on sales because people still wanted retro games. So eBay thought, oh, we'll get into the retro market and start selling retro games again, and that'll be the um, that'll be the answer to our low sales. And then they started messing up left and right. Hmm. Uh, like someone, uh, someone sold uh, what was it? Conker's Bad Fur Day, and Conker's Bad Fur Day had a red cartridge. Oh but, yeah, I remember Conker's that one. Bad, but when Conker's Bad Fur Day was originally released, it was a gray cartridge, not a red cartridge. Okay. Uh, a red cartridge was either Jeremy McGrath Supercross 2000 or All Star Baseball. Okay. But someone would put like, uh, someone would put like the label over like an all-star baseball game and be like hey this is conquest bad fur day how much will you pay for this and gamestop would buy it it's like 30 bucks on on amazon right now pretty interesting nice yeah it's only 15 dollars on uh, gamestop but i bet you once like you factor in shipping and tax it's going to get closer to like at least 25 dollars don't forget the regulatory fees of amazon as well they'll they'll charge you for yeah. that that's true amazon has its own fees so yeah, so I mean these games. Uh, that's the thing with digital games. Uh, if you want a digital game, you have to you have to just uh, capitalize on it. When um, you just have to capitalize and get it when you can, um, because you, they're not always going to be around, especially in a digital format. And when you do download it for for its digital store, as long as the servers are still up, you can still download it from their servers. Yes. Redownload yeah, over and over that down, is. Like once they get rid of Wii U eShop, you know, I can play the game, but if I ever delete it or my console gets erased, I, you know, that's it. Yeah, that's this is some so, digital copies. Right. So unless, unless Nintendo could do something, which I wouldn't be surprised if they could. Mm -hmm. Um so anyway, uh I just found this out on Game Informer right before we went live. The original Halo site goes offline for good next month. Did you hear about this? Not next Halo server? I thought that's uh, December 2021. It said, uh, no, they said the original Halo site. So, I don't, so, like, did Halo have its own website? HaloBungie.net or Bungie.com? Yeah. Well, Bungie is a is a, web, is, is, is a game development site. They said 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the Game Informer right now and I pull up the story because it was... I uh, should have read my Game Informer magazine earlier. Uh, this is what it says. Bungie's original Halo site goes offline next month for good. Hmm. Well, at the same time, at the end of December 2021, they're going to stop um, running the servers of Halo 3 and Reach and other old, old Halo games. Well, that's not so. Um, that's not so shocking because I mean, if you know, look at the Xbox Xbox 360. How many people are still playing those Halo games? If they are, they prob they probably moved on to Halo 4, 5, and the Master Chief Collection. I don't know about five, but definitely they're still playing Halo 3 on um, um, James because back in can, uh, back last time I played it, there was still people still playing the Team Slayer and the playlist and Action Sack and some uh, other playlists. Well, since the Master Chief Collection has all four Halos, can't they just play that off the Master Chief Collection? Yeah, but you're talking about, you, you deal with old, you deal with, like, gamers who are so poor that the only thing you're going to get is, like, a, a used go, a system of three, the Xbox 360, and have to rely on their friend's friend or friends to get the free Xbox subscription. Because I know these people who are like that. But they, they'll, 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 they'll go to their friend, game share with them, Tell them like, hey, uh, give me, uh, share me this game of uh, Xbox 360, and I'll give you like a dollar or two in a game store or whatever, and that's it. You know, it's like a, it's like a, it's like it's welfare, it's like a welfare type of situation with the 360 players. Uh, well, I'm thinking I'm also in that situation too, uh, but, um, you know, I, I just I keep in mind the Xbox 360. Uh, the Xbox One came out like 2014. Yes. So it's really, it's really surprising to me that the servers for 360 games are still up. Are still up basically because we're going, you know, I mean, December 2021 will be seven years since the Xbox One and PS4 came out. Uh huh. And like you, and like I said, these games, you know, if they're playable on Xbox, um. It's probably just the Xbox 360 version that's getting shut down. If you buy, like, if you could buy Halo 3 off, say, Xbox uh, Store, you could probably still play it online, even. Nah. Know, even my, my friend found out about it. He, he, he has uh, free games with gold and stuff like that. You cannot, that. you cannot buy it off the list anymore. Oh, okay. So. They, they, they so delisted it. People ready for that. Um, so, you know, I mean. In seven years, uh, I guess I guess they just figured not enough people are s still playing it to keep to make it worth all the money to keep those servers going. Maybe. All right. Yeah, you know, it's probably not getting as much traffic as Halo Master Chief Collection and Halo uh, Four. You know, it's it, and if it's not getting enough traffic, it doesn't really make sense to keep those servers up. Uh, Do you agree or disagree? I'm sorry, so repeat the question one more time. I didn't get, catch the full question. Um, they're probably uh, the reason they're probably going to shut down the servers is because it's not getting as much traffic as other Halo games like Halo Four, Halo Master Chief Collection. Do you think that could be a reason that because this because that game's not getting enough traffic, they decided to make a date that they're going to shut down the servers? Maybe. I assume. So that that's the way I that's what I think is going to happen. Uh, Halo, uh, it's just not Halo Three on three sixty. It's not getting, um, it's just not getting enough traffic. And they're going to shut it down. But also on top of that, um, the Halo site, I guess this is a website uh, for the, the original Halo that goes online next month for good. Hmm. Okay, uh, one more story. Um, it's a, when, about Microsoft when they got laughed at for trying to buy out Nintendo. Yeah, that was crazy. I don't know why what, what, what came to their minds trying to buy off Nintendo. Well, they probably thought uh, they probably wanted to get into the gaming world. I mean, keep in mind, Super Nintendo and Sony tried to work together at one point. Oh yeah, when that console that came together played the PS and the uh, and the Super Nintendo, something like that. 
what they were going to do was it was going to be Super Nintendo. They were going to have a CD add-on like the Sega Genesis did, but the PlayStation one just never came through, and it ended up becoming the Sony PlayStation. Mm -hmm. But it was originally supposed to be a CD add-on to compete with Sega Genesis and Sega CD. Definitely. And that just never came through. And Xbox, I'm surprised that they tried to buy out Nintendo because when Xbox entered the game market, we're talking 2001, 2002, Nintendo was pretty much established. Definitely. As, as, I mean, they took, I mean, Sega was gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, and Nintendo, so it was kind of like, why would you try to buy out the biggest company? But I'm glad Nintendo said no. I'm glad, because uh, like I said, the more competition we have, the better it is for the customers. And I'm trying to tell that to the younger gamers out there on Xbox Live. Like, guys, stop thinking that everything has to be, like, connected, like, cross-game play, cross-game on co compatible on all systems. What's the purpose, then, of having exclusivity on certain console game systems? You know what I'm saying? They don't understand the, the long-term effect of the this right. co combination the is, of everything. Say, say there was... Oh. Yeah. And the thing is... Think about, you know, say there was only, say Sony was the only game in town, or Microsoft was the only game in town, or Nintendo was the only game in town. You know how much they could screw over consumers and nothing could be done? Which I'm sure they're doing that for quite some time now. <laughs> but the thing is, at least if a company or a system screws over customers, um, they, you could speak with your wallet by supporting someone else. It's just like uh, when the Xbox One uh, came out. I think it was, I think they had a press conference like in 2012 or 2013. Originally, the Xbox One was going to have to connect every 24 hours to the internet or become bricked. And uh, there was going to be our, um, DRM in all video games. So you couldn't trade games, you couldn't rent games, you couldn't sell games back to GameStop. And everybody, and the thing is, everyone told Xbox where they could shove it. Yep, and it had, a horrible, it had a horrible me sales me. the first three years of its me. cycle. Myself and other people were like, Xbox, screw you. Sony, tell me more about the PlayStation 4. <laughs> and in, like two, in only two or three days, it, there was enough backlash where Xbox went back on those policies. Because at PS4, they showed a commercial of two guys sharing a game physically to, to, to yeah. each other. Sony, that was so funny and so true. Sony actually made fun uh, because not only not only that, uh, the like spokesman for the Sony conference said, don't worry, you'll be able to trade games with your friends. You'll be able to sell your old games back to GameStop. <laughs> 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 and the truth is, like if Xbox had stuck, if Microsoft had stuck to their guns with the original decision, I would not have an Xbox One right now. I would have a PlayStation 4. But um, and, but the thing is, say Sony and Nintendo weren't around. It was just Microsoft. Okay. There would be no reason for Microsoft to go back on what they originally wanted to do. Because hmm. Microsoft would be like, fine, play on computers, but we own Windows too, so what, what, you know. You're gonna have to pl you're gonna have to pay us some way, so and that, would, and that would and that would be awful. So that's why I say I like the fact that Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft are the like big three, and that's why I wish more people, if they had the funding, would create their own console, and uh, and um, and try to get in the market and at least. If not, if they couldn't compete with Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft, at least make enough money where they were profitable on their own. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'm not talking about the KFC console that heats up chicken while you play games. <laughs> yeah, I'd be a rich motherfucker to actually buy that console. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, you only need like 3000 You're three. You're only about $3,000 short. Plus eighty dollars for the chicken you buy from DoorDash like I did the other day. What happened with DoorDash? Uh, as an example, I bought KFC chicken for eighty bucks on DoorDash. Eighty bucks? Yeah, I spent that kind of because it was the stimulus check money. 
That doesn't mean you waste it on overpriced crap. <laughs> Dude, chicken is expensive in uh, New York City. So it's like, you know, if you get it from pop. Bucks? Yeah. <laughs> what, did, what was, please tell, what did you order? I ordered uh, this uh, this 12 piece with comes with two sides or three sides. Then I ordered my own my own meal that's like 20 bucks right there of, of a breast and a thigh and a wing for uh, like 14 15 dollars then there's also this the 42 dollar a special which is the 12 piece so plus tax plus shipping plus fees and stuff like that and the tip you know the alcohol comes to almost 80 bucks Meanwhile, I could go to KFC within 15 minutes from my house. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't spend anywhere near that. How much is how much is your 12 uh, piece special? Actually, I don't even know. Because if it's if it's if it's more than 30, 40 bucks, you gonna you gotta be spending a good good chunk chunk of change in person. So. But but the thing is, I mean, I've never actually gotten a 12 piece special. I always get like the two legs and like a couple of sides. Okay. Um. So you don't have like, a family to feed. We had KFC from my house not too long uh, from you know, my house not too long ago. It was like a couple of nights ago, and their soda machine something was off. The soda came out. Uh, the soda came out of the machine flat. Oh wow. Um, like we couldn't like my cousin and I tried drinking it, and just like after a couple of sips, we were like, "Oh, this is awful. We'll just get a soda out of the fridge." Uh huh. So, so but I mean. You know, I don't know how much the twelve piece meal is, um, but actually, um, let, let me see if I can find out online. Cause, oh, uh, let's see, uh, Kentucky for no, KFC National Georgia um, website. They should have a menu on their website. Um. Drive through and carry out available. Dining room still closed. Um, let's see. KFC sauces, twenty dollar fill up, thirty dollar fill up. Um, the twenty dollar fill is easier than the, the eight piece. As you can tell, I know my I know my chicken slash fast food. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, the twenty dollar fill up is eight piece original, eight piece extra crispy. And 12 piece extra crispy tenders. Each meal comes complete with a large coleslaw, four biscuits, and two large mashed potatoes and gravy. The $30 <laughs> fill up, $30 fill up uh, includes everything that this one had, plus 12 tenders or eight additional pieces of chicken on the bone for only $10 more. That's enough to feed your family dinner tonight, lunch tomorrow, and maybe a midnight snack in between. Each meal comes with coleslaw, four biscuits, and two large mashed potatoes and gravy. We all know that the eight piece is nothing. I would so want to eat that again one day. Piece, uh, <laughs> the twenty dollar fill up options are eight piece original, piece extra crispy, or twelve piece extra crispy. <laughs> and you get a coleslaw, four biscuits, and two large mashed potatoes and gravy for twenty dollars. <laughs> That's taxed. Yeah, that's that's over in your area. That's that's like in the rural community. New York City is expensive with the taxes and all. So, <laughs> especially if you order from DoorDash or or Postmates, they're gonna ask you at least like a fee, a tip, a delivery fee, a service fee. Yeah, that's true. Keep in mind, my my place. I live in a poor. Uh, I live in a poor city, but. It also means the prices are really. And you live out in the middle of nowhere. I, I, I'm trying to find out how to get to your place that you share with me. How to get to your place by uh by train. The nearest taxi cab will only take me about 100 miles to get to your place. It costs 250 bucks to get there. Like what the hell? Well, I live in a small city. I uh, this the city. It's, it's not a city. It's there's a rural community. <laughs> there's just no way. Not actually. It's it's suburban. But the community is like only has the city only has like five thousand people in it, and there's only four traffic lights in the entire city. So it's not a city; it's just a either a town or a village or a, or a hamlet. Maybe a village or a town, 
but there, but like uh, my cousin lives out like in the rural part of the city. Okay. I live in the suburban part of the city. Okay. But I'm still living in a suburban area. That's why I got the fast food places, like 10, 15 minute walk from my house. And uh, and yeah, but there's no taxi. There's no public transportation out here. And if there is taxis, they're like fucking hundred miles away from you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm 200 miles from Atlanta, so it's not like I'm in a big city. I'm actually closer. I'm actually closer to Florida than I am to Atlanta. Mm, interesting. Okay, so um, was that the uh, last story we had? Uh, yeah, now it's the e-commerce story. And it's not even the one I had planned, because something else happened. <laughs> so the West Side story, uh, the story about the West Side story record, that'll be two weeks from now unless something else happens. Huh. So what happened this time, um, I was doing, I had my final sales on eBay. I moved to Discogs for records, uh, price charting for games, and Bonanza for everything. Um, but uh, the thing is, uh, when I did my final auctions on eBay, uh, I used stock photos as the photos. Okay. So one person, so the person that in the United Kingdom that uh, bought like a <coughs> value record, it was the James Bond theme. Uh, he got the record and he was upset because he said the record arrived scratched, and he said it was nothing like in the photos. Apparently, this guy can't tell the difference between a stock photo and a regular photo. Now, on eBay, I have it set up where I accept all returns as long as they ship the item back. Um, this guy thinks now, um, when this guy filed a return, he said that the pictures didn't match the actual item. So, now keep in mind, this guy lives in the United Kingdom. So I went back to eBay, I accepted their return, but they wouldn't let me print out a shipping label. Okay. So I was like, well, so I was like, why is this not, you know, why won't it let me purchase a shipping label for the customer? So I scroll all the way down and it said, um, it, it said like, I can't buy a shipping label because, and then it, there was a drop down box. I clicked the drop down box, they had two options. It said the item's too large to ship or the customer lives in a different country. Hmm. Obviously, the customer lives in a different country. I selected that, and they said, okay, the guy, the buyer has till January 25th to ship the item. The buyer's still trying to tell me that he's not going to ship the item back until I pay him for the shipping. Now, uh, I mean, if it's free shipping... It's not sh free shipping. It's like $15. Uh. We're, we're talking about shipping from the United Kingdom to the United States. But eBay saying since that um, it's international shipping, I don't have to pay for it, even though I normally would have. To. Especially if you if you if you told them it'll be free shipping originally, you uh, gave no, it. I didn't tell him there was free shipping. But the thing is, like if he sends the record back, I'll get it. You know, he'll get his original shipping back, and he'll get what he paid for the record back. But eBay's telling me I don't have to pay for the shipping because it's international. Of course. And this guy's still trying to tell me that, oh, you should, you have to pay for it. That's eBay's policy. I'm like, obviously not, because when I look up the status of the return, which I do almost every day, it says the status is waiting for buyer to ship item. If this guy doesn't ship it by January 25th, eBay's going to say, you're out of luck. Everyone thinks, especially around our, around our age and, and, uh, and under, that it's about free everything. I want free this, free that, free uh, video games, free girlfriend, free food. I mean, fuck, man. This is ridiculous. Yeah, and the thing but the thing is, I mean, you know, I went through the website, I did what they told me to, and they said that uh, because of international shipping, we can't send a shipping label or whatever, so you're not responsible for the shipping, even if I would normally be responsible if this was a transaction in the United States. They yeah. said that I'm not, they said that they're not holding me responsible for the shipping, basically. Now, I know this guy's going to have a tantrum uh, because I told him, 
look, if you don't, if you're not going to agree with me, I'm not going to go back and forth arguing with you. We can wait till January 25th and see what eBay says. But I know, based on what they said, the status of the return is that if there's no proof that he shipped the item by January 25th, that they're going to say, you know what, this return is null and void. You don't have to give the money back. This is over. And I know he's going to throw a tantrum. Yeah, I, I, eBay will be on your side, James, because yeah. uh, because you're because you're, you're, you're a good so customer. That, you're a good you're a good seller. Happened, so I know eBay will be on my side because that's what happened with Fable Three. Uh, they um, the person first they claimed the game didn't work, so they wanted to return it. So I or I said they had to return it to get their refund. Then they told me that they fixed the game; it does work, but they never shut down the return. When the return uh, ran its course and they didn't ship the game, eBay said we're closing the return in the seller's favor because they never sh- shipped the game, I'm, and it's gonna end the same way on the 25th. Uh-huh. If this if this guy doesn't ship the record back, and look, I'm just I'm sorry, you know I, it's it's, you know it sucks that the record arrived scratched, but, you know also I I did the best. Um, I packed it the best I could. I put an ounce of newspaper like on each side of the record to create like a cushion. Oh yeah. But when items get shipped, especially internationally, you know, sometimes that happens. But if eBay's not gonna hold me responsible for the shipping, yeah. don't tell me that they that they will hold me responsible. Unless when you, Unless it's someone stole it, I was still, that's obviously that's not the case. But you know, right? But There's a lot of theater going on here in the United States, guys. To those who are who are new to the United States, because here in New York City, there's a lot of uh, package theft. You know, you try to yeah, you try to buy a, a, a Nintendo controller or an Xbox controller, whatever. The the packages well, are ripped up a bit and been taped together again. Yeah. Like the people, are, people so, are literally looking through my packages just because I, I I have money to buy it. You know, it's ridiculous. Right. So you know, I feel bad for the buyer that the record arrived. You know, in less in worse condition than it did when it left. But at the same time, you know, eBay's not going to let me buy the record by a shipping label through their website. So you have to return it. Right. You know, just. And to say that the record and to say the record was um, mis um, to say it was misrepresented, people use stock photos all the time. There's nothing wrong with using a stock photo as your as your photo, because uh, someone else who was interested in that same record, he saw the photo and he's like, dude, he said, dude, do you have any uh, pictures of the actual record? And I sh- and I sent him pictures of the original record, uh, as pictures of the actual record, and you know he didn't have a problem now using stock photos. Yeah, stock photos for for bu- for buying and selling like eBay been around for decades. I, I did it and too. And websites use them to, to also. Yeah, and and then of course the eBay especially like the ones that are like mass produce or mass sell these games like for example you know, Tenchu or Super Mario 64, they'll have like a stock photo of Super Mario 64 box cover and that's it. And I'm okay with that because I'm looking for a, a, a used game and I know it's going to be used no matter what I what I see on that picture. Right. And I bet if you contact the seller, they would give you a picture of the actual item. Especially if you, if you place a, a bid on it one time. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, but this just this guy, like he insulted me. Then when I responded back to him because he was rude to me, he's like, "Why are you so rude?" It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's the way you, it's the way you were to me. Uh, let's see if I can pull up. Well, uh, the customer's uh, always the right, James. You have to understand. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what? you can't. The That's customers. What? Wait, said you? Repeat yourself. I didn't. Uh, oh, I said the customer. You know, the customer is always right to some extent. You know. <laughs> I mean, I I'm not, uh, whoever said that was not was not a seller. <laughs> I mean, hey, I, I remember selling a couple of the um games. I, I remember I bought my. I mean, I sold. I bought a fear a fear uh 
a fear game called First Account Assault Recon 2 for about, what, 50 bucks, 45 bucks. And I sold it uh, like new for about $40 on free shipping. And I got a good you know record of it because I showed everything. So it's like, you know, that was, that was good sellership back then. But now the, t today with uh, with the everyone growing up from the, 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 the Generation Z, they think that everything's free. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, I don't get them. I really just don't. Because obviously you pay a price when dealing with uh, certain things or, or even all things. No matter what it is, it could be a small pack of chewing gum at a, at a supermarket or a huge order of, I don't know, toilet paper at, at, at Amazon. That's what we're going on last year with the pandemic. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just pulled up the uh, communication I have with this customer. This is what he says. He says, eBay states that you have to pay for the return postage as the item did not match the description. Or just refund the money as the record is worthless without the picture sleeve and is totally unusable. Entirely up to you. I go, I already said eBay would not let me buy a shipping label through them. The return status is also listed as waiting for buyer to ship by. If you want to continue to insist that I am wrong, we can wait until January 25th until eBay takes action to see who is right. I go, secondly, you can't tell the difference between a stock photo and a regular photo. You could have asked for a photo of the actual item. And before you try saying sellers can't use stock photos, that's wrong. Sellers use stock photos all the time. Also, that's since the stock. Of newspaper on each side is not enough protection, what would you have done instead? He goes, I know what you said, and I said that I would ask eBay about the post-its in my last message to you, and that's what I did. They kindly told me that you have to either supply postage or pay for postage in advance. Regarding your photo, as you clearly didn't state that was a stock photo, so I could only assume that was the actual item I would be receiving. You certainly did not mention that there was no picture sleeve, plus the condition of the actual record is unusable and junk. As for shipping, I would have shipped in a cardboard record, uh, cardboard record packaging, which is what every single other sensitive person uses. Certainly not two pieces of screwed up paper. Actually, two ounces, but what a strange and rude reply. I was just trying to establish the correct eBay procedure. You obviously disagree. And we just left it at that. Hmm. Because the thing is, you know, if eBay wouldn't let me, you know, if eBay wouldn't let me buy postage through them, they also said it's wait, they're waiting for the buyer to ship the item because they're going to need a shipping number or something. When they do, when, you know, when that's, when that's where we're at, they're not waiting for me to pay postage because they're not going to sell me a shipping label to a different country. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, James. You've been dealing with customers that just think that they can they can get away with uh, having lots of free items, and it's like it doesn't work like that in the real world. You know, you pay for yeah, something it, in the long run. It's it's like when Darkness the Curse was joined us. Uh, we talked about that one guy who thought he should have been able to keep the records because they're not what he ordered. So why should he have to send them back? Uh, but he still wanted his money back for those records. And yeah, it's eBay. This is a this is a this is a uh, fucking uh, Macy's or JC Penny, like yeah, where you get. Really? But you deal with individual people with with individual uh, supplies, so it's not uniformed like that of Macy's or McDonald's or Burger King, whatever. However, you get your food or items or whatever by 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 delivery or whatnot. Yeah, this is not. I'm not a big chain. I'm one guy. People don't understand that YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, if you see people acting out on YouTube with their with their profile and stuff like that, like you know that, that that's an individual content after a while. Because you're not right. dealing with because YouTube and eBay and stuff like that, they're not our employers per se. They never were our mm. employers, which is platform users. Yeah. If anything, we're independent contractors. Nah, not necessarily. We're still like independent of our own free will, but yeah. Well, independent contractors, we basically offer, we basically agree to a rate. It's just like when we agree to YouTube, we agree to um, build our audience and then be able to earn ad revenue. That's if they allow you to, because obviously they don't let anyone, everyone have an ad revenue anymore. 
to make sure not to have right, a yeah, people people PewDiePie. Left and right. Yeah, no more PewDiePies anymore coming up in the ranks. No more PewDiePies on YouTube. I think, like, YouTube's just going to crash and burn, like Facebook, like Twitter. <laughs> maybe not, maybe, maybe, maybe not Twitter, but I think YouTube's eventually going to crash and burn. Maybe even like Facebook. And new websites will rise up. You know, maybe. Look at BitChute. They're earning like five, they're making $5,000 more every month than their monthly cost. You know, and I, I guess maybe they won't have the ad revenue, but they still allow you to get, receive donations right from your channel. Yep. And I have to say, uh, speaking of that model, I think like the Patreon model or any model where you do, uh, where the most of your money comes in from donations from viewers, that's going to be the new norm. Uh -huh. The days of earning most of your money from ad revenue is, is gone. Yeah, you have to be like a very like vanilla, very censored, very rated G type of user on YouTube to make the ad revenue. Cause you're like be actually you be actual worker for YouTube to get the ad revenue, and I don't want that. Well, the thing is, I mean, not even that because I uh, look. I mean, look at Kappa when they said all all channels geared towards kids wouldn't uh, wouldn't be allowed to get revenue anymore, and. Uh, I guess I guess Susan Norjicki wants to retire. Maybe that's maybe that's why she makes such bonehead decisions. She's she's a social justice warrior brat. And no offense <laughs> to Susan, I'm sorry because I've seen all these guys on YouTube when they're making these videos, and they don't come from hardship per se. They don't come from like a struggle. They don't have to, they never had the struggle to make a, a buck on on the internet because before the internet, you know, before all this you know 2010 stuff with the internet, you know, I was busy working my ass off at the fast food while they were busy going to college trying to say, oh, I'm I'm a pansexual, <sighs> like that. <laughs> It's the truth. <laughs> How do I even respond to that? <laughs> it's a it's a such word, pansexuality. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, How do I follow that? How do How do I? <laughs> I'm sorry if I, if I put you on the spot, but. It's it's not you, of course. Just that I just don't like the fact that you learn the way YouTube's going. <laughs> but the thing is, also, I think uh, the one benefit of the way things are online is um, people can work from home a lot more easy easily, and there's a lot more jobs out there where you can work from home. Like uh, when I worked at Slumins, uh, the program they had uh, with the automatic dialer and everything. It's like, why couldn't you just install this on your own computer and use it at home if you had a phone at home that was connected? And tell you the truth, there's no reason you can't. Right. So they could just give you the program, you download it, you log in, and then boom, it gives you a number just to call, and you either, either the computer dials those numbers for you or you have to manually dial them, and you could work from home. Definitely. And the thing is, uh, like managers at Slomans, uh, I was in the telemarketing division, obviously, the managers could log in. They could tell when you were logged in, when you were uh, took a break, and when you were logged out. So it's not like you could, uh, so it's not like you could log out four hours early and still everyone would think you were logged in. Right. No, they can tell when, when you logged in and when you logged out. Because uh, when you did, it kept a record of that. And the manager, and I, I never saw the like those records, but the managers could tell. Pretty much any website you go to, whether you work for a website or not, whether you are a visitor to a website or not, or well, if the, if you visit the website constantly, they keep a log of everything you do on the site. So YouTube, right. Facebook, MySpace again, you know they. They, they, they keep track of what you do, you know. If you are definitely uh, in school, in the university I am right now, they keep track of what device you go on to and 
things that matter. So they know that fact that if, they, if I'm on my computer, my desktop PC, that's taboo because you're not supposed to look at my stuff on my computer. So that they know for that, it's a fact that's a policy by the Consumer Bill of Rights and student rights as well. So, but you know, you know, it's 2021. You know, everything's logged on the computer at all times, so you cannot, you can't escape from it. And guys who want to steal money from the government or steal money from people, other like poor saps like us, you're pathetic because you don't want to accept the fact that you know everything's tracked. You know, right. it sucks to be you, the 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 thief or thief or the the uh, the the theft guy. You know, person stealing the stealer. Okay, so that's where we're going to end things. Our next podcast will be two weeks from tonight on January 30th at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, uh, Dr. Games 101, you got anything else you want to add before we end things? Uh, I just want to say, guys, uh, if those to, to my audience are wondering uh, we're not going to make that review of the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it sometime this month, but definitely between February and March, because I had to play through the entire campaign, as well as research on the Cold War more often than usual, to see if I'm accurate or not with the what I've been saying for the last several months, if not years, on YouTube. So give me time, and I might go make a good, decent review of Black Ops Cold War, so... Yeah, and I think uh, I think I'm um, I've been really putting off uh, reviewing Reckless the Yakuza missions just because it's so hard in the beginning of the game. Uh, so like I I've been putting off the review, but I think I might actually just cancel that review and move on to something else. Okay. Because because a I hate the game. Secondly, if I review it, I'm only going to be like in the first few levels, so I'm not even going to be able to explore much of the game because the first there's this level that's so hard it's like the second or third level and also uh also someone mentioned to you james i'm not trying to put you on the spot again but but thank you for accepting me saying what i said earlier about the the pansexual part because these are true situations on campus over the last 10 years or at least less than five years so it's like yeah, that's what's going on in these these campuses and stuff like that before COVID nineteen. So Yeah. And the thing and also about colleges, I have to say, you know, now obviously look, if you wanna be a doctor, if you wanna be a lawyer, if you wanna be an accountant, then yeah, you should go to college. But if you're gonna be someone but if you don't know what you wanna be or you don't or like um or if you're gonna be going for like a degree in liberal arts I think college at that point is useless. Definitely. And I and that's and that's what and that's one thing parents have to do is stop saying, "Oh, just go to college for anything. It'll work out later." Yeah, and being fucking ten thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand in debt later on. Yeah. So I mean, I'm taking the risk though with with this so business people degree. Like, people like to disagree with me when I say college is useless. And I'm like, for most people it is, because most people just don't know, don't, even if they're serious, they don't know what they want to study. Yeah, and just work at fast and, food. Just work at fast food, and, you'll be fine. And, they, <laughs> and if you're like me, and if you're like me, who's being told, oh, it doesn't matter what you study in college, you'll get a degree and, you'll, and it'll work out. No. Like, either have a path or just don't go to college, period. Definitely. Okay, so this is where we're going to end things. Uh, this has been epi- this was episode 12 of the Let's Discuss Gaming podcast. I am your host, Triple J, for my co-host, Dr. Games 101. Pansexual! We'll be back. <laughs> we'll be I'm back sorry! Two weeks. Bye, guys! <laughs> we'll be back two weeks uh, to, from tonight on January 30th at 9 p.m. Eastern. Good night, everyone. Bye! <laughs>